So last time on Dragon Ball Super, Beerus after briefly fighting Ultra Gogeta then challenged Goku and Vegeta again, this time as Ultra Vegito, now with special Potara that allowed them to stay fused for at least a day. But following a crazy battle between two all-powerful gods, the power of Vegito went just a little too far culminating in seemingly the death of Beerus. And now in today's manga, the gods, Grand Priest and Zeno himself must now get involved to punish the god killer. But before we begin, support this video and channel by leaving a like right now as you're reading this and watching till the very end for its shocking conclusion. Enjoy. So our story continues in the aftermath of Vegito's final Kamehameha on Beerus. The smoke begins to dissipate, gently revealing a figure in the midst. As it finally clears, we see Vegito is breathing heavily, sweat beating from his brow and his chest rising and falling with speed, huffing and puffing as though his lungs simply cannot receive enough oxygen to keep his body alive. Finally, he gathers his strength and smirking says, <laughs> He's not here anymore. Looks like he got away somehow. I... I can't seem to sense a trace of him anywhere. I should have known. Ha! <laughs> so typical of Beerus. Having said this, Vegeta begins to look, his eyes darting back and forth, searching for any sign of movement that could be Beerus. Vegeta doesn't like this. How could Beerus be avoiding his senses in this form? Nothing should be able to escape him. Vegito continues to scan the area, but he finds nothing. It's as if Beerus simply faded away, written out of existence. Vegito's anger begins to rise to a crescendo, his patience running thin before he yells out, So this is the great Beerus! They didn't tell me you like to run away from fights you cannot win! Show yourself immediately and let your fate be assured. Do you hear me? Come out now, you coward! Are you going to fight me or not? He soon spots Whis down below and yells out to him, Whis, what kind of game is this? Since when do so-called gods run and hide from a fight? And to think of all the remarkable things I heard about Beerus' power. Tell me, where is that kitty cat? Has he gone to drink some milk? Take a nap in the sun? Perhaps he's chosen to pick a fight with some mice instead of the great Saiyan race before him. Tch, this is so unbefitting of a god. But Whis is simply just silent for a moment, a thought growing in his mind, thinking of the right words to say, before then finally looking at Vegito with a face of concern and says, I don't know how else to tell you this. But he is not hiding, Vegito. He is gone. You killed him. Huh? What did you say? Vegito is utterly blindsided by the news. He doesn't know how to compute the words that he just heard. His face contorts into shock at first. I... I killed him? That's what you're saying? He's no more? Vegito can hardly believe the words are coming out of his own mouth. But then, he begins to nervously smile, saying, You must be kidding! There's simply no way that I have killed him! If I truly had, then you wouldn't be so calm about his death! You wouldn't be so emotionless as you are right now! Please, spare me this nonsense and stop with the games! I do not like to indulge in such childish activities! But Whis is eerily devoid of any emotion still, as though he didn't just witness what happened to Beerus. Whis opens his mouth and calmly replies, How else should I be reacting, Vegito? Did you expect something else of me? I am an angel attendant. I exist only to serve the wants and needs of the God of Destruction in this universe. Does it alarm you to hear that I have no feelings, either positive or negative, towards my assigned God? That is the way of the angels, and that is the way that it has always been. There are no childish activities as you say, just merely duty. Weiss then points in a direction and says, 
If you don't believe me, just look over there and you will find the answer that you seek. Vegito's eyes flicker in the direction of where Whis is pointing and for a moment his facial expression runs cold. It takes him a while to fully believe what he is seeing before... <coughs> and there, motionless on the floor, is Beerus' arm, the last surviving part of him. The rest has been blasted out of existence. Vegito, still in disbelief, tries to wrap his brain around what is happening. No! There's no way! I don't understand how this can be! This isn't what I wanted! Vegito then closes his eyes in sadness and anger, his emotions getting the better of him, as an ache in his heart begins to swell that only he can feel. He wrestles internally with his feelings as he thinks, How? How powerful are we in this form? I didn't know that we were capable of such power! I would have held back if I knew this would happen! I would have stopped myself from going too far! Damn it! The Vegeta in me got carried away! I lost control and I let this happen! Vegeta then flies down to where Beerus' arm lays, completely still on the ground. He stoops down low and slowly picks up Beerus' hand. For a few moments, he peers at it sadly a range of emotions coursing through his body. Hating that after everything that has happened, it finally came down to this. What? What have we done? Following this, Vegeta then turns to Whis, his mind churning through options, trying to think of a way to change what happened. He says, So, what happens now? I have a bad feeling about this. I know that they're extremely powerful, but I wouldn't think the Dragon Balls alone had the ability to revive a god. What do I need to do to fix this? I know that this is my wrong, and I have to find a way to make this right, Whis. I will give my life if it means bringing back Beerus. Whis, however, just looks back at him, again with a face that holds no real emotion or tells. I'm sorry, Vegito. But there is nothing you can do now. What's done is done. We cannot turn back time here. Just wait there. Your just reward will come to you now. Goodbye for now. Before suddenly vanishing away to the surprise of Ultra Vegito. But behind Vegito, another set of feet arrived just as fast onto the scene as we left it. <gasps> This presence, is that you, Beerus? Leaving Ultra Vegito to slowly but assuredly turn around only to be met with a shocking sight. What? What are you doing here? And suddenly standing before him out of nowhere, all 11 gods of destruction appear and surround Vegito, boxing him in from all sides. And there is no escape. We are treated to a close-up of their faces. They look hauntingly angry, their teeth gritted and eyes narrow. There is only one thing on their mind, and that is making Vegito pay for what he has done to Beerus. The two angriest, with bloodlust emanating from them, being Champa, the brother of Beerus, and Belmod, the best friend of the former God of Destruction. <coughs> Vegito is rooted to the spot in shock, unable to believe that the God of Destructions would appear and pin their sights on him. This isn't good and he knows it. He peers at them unsurely saying, The Gods of Destruction? What is this? I don't understand what's going on here. What are you all doing? This is about another tournament. This isn't the right time. Belmod though then notices that in Vegito's hand he is holding none other than Beerus' severed arm. Belmod at first gains a smirk on his face, almost unbelieving of the audacity of Vegito to hold his victim's arm like a trophy, saying, You Saiyan scum! 
The truth is out in the open now. So you were the one who killed our fellow god. Before outreaching his hand in a rage and yelling, I bet you thought you'd get away with this, didn't you, mortal? Well, we will not stand for this. You will pay, you treacherous scum. Do you hear me? You will pay. He then looks to the other gods who are all in agreement, now knowing their worst fears are confirmed and the assailant is right before them. There's a hunger in the eyes of the 11 gods, a hunger for Vegito's blood and pain. They lack no confidence as they know together, however strong Ultra Vegito may be, he stands no chance against the 11 strongest in the multiverse. And with a sorrowful rage, Chumper yells, Gods of destruction, hear me! We shall do this for Beerus! We cannot allow his death at the hands of this Saiyan scum to go unpunished! We must work together to bring this trash to justice! Nobody murders a god of destruction and is allowed to get away with it! Nobody! Hakai! What? Vegito begins to panic. Worry written all over his face as all 11 gods of destruction who are surrounding him place their hands out ready to Hakai him. Vegito knows there is no escape now. His fate has been sealed. In the shock of this unbelievable turn of events, even the cocky Ultra Vegito can barely say a thing, petrified in the spot. But with no mercy, in unison, the 11 gods of destruction start to Hakai Vegito, and a tremendous ball of dark destruction energy begins to emanate in tandem from their outstretched hands, before they finally yell, Hakai! a scream that could strip paint from the walls. He's in sheer, utter agony, trapped and defenseless in a massive concentrated ball of her kind. There is no way out for him. He is subject to the punishment from the gods and nothing can save him now. But suddenly, just as fast as they arrive, the 11 gods and Vegito vanish from the scene as if they were never there to begin with. Whis, who now reveals himself to still have been nearby, then finally begins to show some emotion as he looks on astounded as to what has just happened to Vegito and the gods. Whis then says, with remorse in his voice, Only Zeno knows what horrible fate lies for those mindless individuals that dare to kill a god. Accident or not, I leave this up to you now, father. Vegito's destiny is in your hands. Vegito then appears in a strange place. The same location Goku first met the Grand Priest, Zeno and his guards. He sits to his knees, weak, hurt and coughing in pain. His body barely able to function after the agonizing punishment it just received. <sighs> what? What happened? Vegito gets up feebly and scans the desolate area. Nothing stirs. It seems as though he's the only one there. Huh? He says. Where did those gods go? Did they spare me? Did they finally see that what happened to Beerus was an accident? Surely they must know. I didn't mean to kill him. That isn't me. But as Vegito self-reflects, out of nowhere, a stern voice hits Vegito's ears, calling out from the distance saying, Don't be so foolish, Saiyan. No, of course they did not spare you. Why would they ever do that? In fact, they brought you here for an even worse fate. <gasps> you! Vegito turns around to see that Zeno is standing there with his two guards and the Grand Priest. They're staring right at him as though they were looking into his very soul, scrutinizing Vegito's every movement. The subtle, happy and calming nature of the Grand Priest and Zeno have now worn off. It is almost like they are now two entirely different entities. Vegito is in utter disbelief and says, 
Zenchan! Is that really you? So it was you who was behind all that? What is going on here? This is a big misunderstanding. I hope you realize. And still in pain and wrecked with fatigue, Vegito begins naively walking over to Zeno, saying, Listen to me, carefully. You know me. I didn't mean to do any of this. It's not what I wanted. If there's a way to bring Beerus back, I'll do it. Just... <laughs> this... This is... But before he can move any further, Vegeta looks down and sees one of Zeno's guards has appeared right in front of him and delivered an excruciating punch right in his gut, with the guard confidently saying, Stand back. Move only when told to move, mortal. <laughs> Vegito coughs out blood in pain. The wear and tear on his body from the 11 gods hurting him has made him too slow to react to the punch. Vegito can only drop onto one knee, saying, Damn! They're really fast and strong. I didn't see it coming. It was on to me before I could even move. Knowing that violence isn't the answer here, Vegito then looks up to Zeno again and says, Zenchan, stop this madness! Please just listen to me for a moment! Let me explain what's going on! It's me, Goku! Well, right now I'm actually Goku and Vegeta combined together, but you know me and you know this isn't right! Just give me a second to explain myself, damn it! But his words fall on deaf ears. Zeno doesn't want to hear the words coming out of his mouth, and much less the Grand Priest, whose face becomes even more unimpressed and dark in nature. In a blur of extreme movement, fitting of the father of all angels, the Grand Priest stealthily appears behind Vegito, evading his senses, and knocks him out from behind with one perfect blow. No! No! And with just that one move, the Grand Priest, ranked one of the four strongest in the multiverse, knocks Vegito straight to base and onto the ground, unconscious like a mere child. With Vegito now out for the count, the Grand Priest, with a stern face, looks down and says, That will be enough talking. Do you not see that we do not need any more explanation from you? Your judgement is near and will come from Zeno in the next few days, God Killer. Until then, you have our permission to rot here in silence. The scene then goes pitch black as some time passes by. <coughs> Let me out of here! And from the pitch black, we are treated to a shocking image of a severely bloody and bruised Vegito who is now suspended in mid-air by a jungle of chains that bind him from the walls and ground. Now topless, each one wraps around a limb from his feet to his legs, his arms and his neck. He's completely bound, trapped and nowhere to escape. This is the tragic end of Ultra Vegeta. Or is it? But that was it for today's video guys and if you made it this far leave me a hashtag escape in the comments down below and let me know your ideas for part 4 of this story. How should this story end? Let me know but if you want to support this manga just go to my Patreon where for just $3 you can fund the next chapter to come out ASAP and also receive a ton of manga goodies in return too. But if you just want to watch more of my videos just click on one of these two on the right but until next video guys, cheers.